Okay, we're back. <clears throat> Hopefully you wrote down some great things. If you'd like, I'd love to see those. If you want to shoot those to me on an email, I'd love to, to read what you came up with in terms of that theme. Um, you know, that might be a, a good paper as well. Money is represented as a, corruptive, a corrupting force in F. Scott Fitzgerald's Tender as the Night. That'd be a great thesis. All right, page 84. For the first time, the mention of her mother annoyed rather than amused Dick. He wanted to sweep away her mother, remove the whole affair from the nursery footing upon which Rosemary persistently established it. This is the uh, obsession with youth. I talked about that theme earlier. The, the obsession with youth in the 1920s, in the Roaring Twenties, youthfulness was, was the obsession, was the value, right? And here he has fallen in love or had fallen into, into infatuation with Rosemary. He thinks he loves her, whatever. And he calls it the nursery footing, right? Her mom's always around. How can he engage her as a woman? Although she is, what she is is youthful. What she is is very young and innocent. And yet he wants to, um, and he's attracted to her youthfulness because that's what the age is all about, right? The value is on youth. And yet at the same time, he doesn't want to engage her in that reality because how can he actually uh, have an affair with a child? That's disgusting and not appropriate and not acceptable in many ways. And so he's caught in the middle, in the reality of things, right? He wants to deny the fact that she's a young girl traveling with her mom for protection against creeps like him. And, uh, and part of this is bothering him, right? Part of this is troubling to him. But he realized that this impulse was a loss of control. There we go. What would become of Rosemary's urge toward him for even a moment? If, for even a moment, he relaxed, he saw, not without panic, that the affair was sliding to rest. It could not stand still. It must go on or go back. For the first time, it occurred to him that Rosemary had her hand on the lever more authoritatively than he. So, I call this the paternal theme. It's kind of gross, but the paternal theme that runs throughout this text who are the paternal figures? And who is seeking a paternal figure? In many ways, Nicole chose Dick because of his paternalist uh, role, her, his paternal, not the paternalist, his paternal role in her life. She chose him. She, he was her doctor, right? Um, hard to get much more paternal than that. Dick's relationship with Rosemary is a paternal relationship. Um, and he is continually going after these younger women. We see that even at the end of the text, his infatuation with young women. And so the paternal theme or the paternal drive of the age um, really is found in Dick's affair with Rosemary and with other young women. But what's interesting about this passage, not only is it, is it just symptomatic of the age, but what's interesting here is what the, what the narrator says about Rosemary having her hand on the lever. What lever is that? It doesn't matter. Whatever. The lever controls the machine, right? And so she is controlling the machine. She is controlling where this thing goes. She is in control. Control of herself. Control of her environment. And she has a mother to help her with that control as well. She asks far more questions, perhaps, than the other kind of minions um, under which Dick has control, right? And so Dick sees her as a challenge. She's youthful, and he wants to get her away from her mom, um, probably because her mom is a force to be reckoned with, but also because he feels like if he isolates, right, he may have better chance of taking control of her, when in fact she has her hand on the lever. Part of this text is about Dick Diver losing control of everything, actually. And so, although we see this paternal theme in some ways, we also see Dick Diver in this passage too, hinting at the fact that he's, he's, he's losing control. It's self-control. He has sacrificed that in his scrambling for the extravagant. Oh, come back, computer. All right, so, um, you know, here we have on 112, I think is an interesting um, section right before we go into the the break, right? I believe it's this breakdown, yeah. Right before the break in book one to two, um, on page 112, we have Nicole's breakdown. This is an important one because uh, we end this section with, 
um, Nicole um, giving signal to or signaling um, her mental weakness. And then really that becomes a, a part of the theme as well is, is mental illness in the text, right? Mental illness has a place in the text as it goes forward, but Nicole's breakdown at the end of book one is worth looking at. With the idea that Nicole had fallen in the bathroom and hurt herself, Rosemary followed Dick. That was not the condition of affairs at which she stared before Dick shouldered her back and brusquely blocked her view. Nicole knelt beside the tub, swaying sideways and sideways. It's you, she cried. It's you, come to intrude on the only privacy I have in the world, with your spread with red blood on it. I'll wear it for you, I'm not ashamed, though it was such a pity. On all fools day we had a party in the Zurich Sea, and all the fools were there, and I wanted to come dressed in a spread, but they wouldn't let me. Control yourself, he says. So I sat in the bathroom, and they brought me a domino, and I and said, wear that. I did. What else could I do? Control yourself, Nicole. It's ironic that he's telling her to control herself. I never expected you to love me. It was too late. Only don't come in the bathroom, the only place I can go for privacy, dragging spreads with red blood on them and asking me to fix them. Control yourself, he says for a third time, right? Get up. Rosemary, back in the salon, heard the bathroom door bang and stood trembling. Now she knew that Violet McKisco had... She knew what Violet McKisco had seen in the bathroom at Via Diana. She answered the ringing phone and almost cried with relief when she found it was Collis Clay, who had traced her to the diver's apartment. She asked him to come up while she got her hat, because she was afraid to go into her room alone. So this first book begins with Dick Diver as the manipulator of, of the socialites, as Dick Diver as the ruler of the beach, as Dick Diver as, as the puppet master over these simple-minded socialites who only want to climb in society, who only want to engage in more extravagance. And he reads this and he plays into it. And yet in some ways he himself is caught up into it as well. This swirling whirlwind or this swirling, what do you call that in, in the ocean when you have a, a whirlpool? He seems to be caught up in the whirlpool himself. Although in many ways he manipulates, perhaps he stirs the water, but we also see him getting sucked in. And at the end of this book, we see him more and more kind of losing control and diving into this whirlpool. And there he himself is being dragged down deeper and deeper. Nicole's breakdown, um, I think, reveals in some ways Dick's role in her life. Some of the complexity of being both husband and doctor. It also reveals the mystery that we was witnessed earlier in the novel, but covered up and protected by Tommy Barbin. So right here at the, at the breaking point, we, we jump back now, back in time. And it, it's interesting here, as we jump back in time, <clears throat> this was not Fitzgerald's first choice in his creation of this novel. Uh, the flashback was not. He had originally written it, uh, with this part being first, uh, chronological order. But then, as he published it, he changed it and put, um, as we have read it, read it now, that was his second choice. Some editors, after Fitzgerald's death, moved the second part to the beginning. They rearranged it again, making the novel run in chronological order. Now, here would be another good time to write a bit, um, if you're up for it. Take a moment to write. Here's what I would, I would consider, or I would suggest you writing. What are your thoughts about the flashback? What does Fitzgerald accomplish by structuring the novel in this manner? I think those are two good questions. First, what are your thoughts about the flashback? And second, what, what does Fitzgerald accomplish by structuring the novel in this manner? All right, take a, take a little writing, take some time, we'll take a break. <laughs> 